Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Shirley Tarawali. I'm Director of Institutional Planning and Partnerships at ILRI, the International Livestock Research Institute. We've recently finalised a strategy for the coming 10 years. And the reason we've done this is because the Institute's previous 10-year strategy actually finished in 2010, and we've had a lot of changes. And this will now be signed by the chairman of the Ilbert Board of Trustees, the new program. We've become a member of the CGIR Consortium. Well, good morning. I'm Carlos Perez del Castillo. We've had a new director general. Jimmy Smith, uh, the new director general of Ilri. And the challenges facing agriculture and the livestock sector in particular have become so huge that we really needed to consolidate these and refocus our efforts for the coming 10 years. Our strategy is called Livestock Research for Food Security and Poverty Reduction. And the great support that has this includes the kind of mission that we used to focus on, Pathways Out of Poverty. The damage that can happen. The differences in the regional and country um, levels of preparedness. Our topic this afternoon is why fodder matters to Ilri. But we've broadened it. Food and nutritional security are also important. And making sure that that poverty is addressed in a way that is efficient and safe for the environment, as well as for human health. Ilri's vision is much bigger than what we, as an institute alone, need to do. It's a world where all people have access to enough food and livelihood options in order to fulfil their potential. The strategic objectives were informed by some diagnosis. The diagnosis involved a lot of external consultation and it involved trying to identify what are the big issues in agriculture, food security, that we need to take into account in order to decide what it is we need to do. Firstly, the food security challenge. We know that the whole world is concerned about how is it going to feed itself in the coming decades, 9 billion, 10 billion people, how are we going to feed them? And for us, what does that mean for livestock? Are they part of the solution to that food security challenge? We've recognised as well, through our consultations, the need to deliver at scale. We cannot operate on small project levels any longer. We need to make sure that our research does go towards development outcomes and impact so that significant numbers of people who rely on animals in one way or another, and there are probably about a billion of them in the world, are really impacted by our research. We recognise we need to be very specific about considering the role of women. There's really good evidence that if you want to have significant agricultural development impacts, then you have to take account, specific account, of the role of women. And that's very true for the livestock sector, where women are often the ones who are raising animals, or they're the ones processing livestock products, milk for example, or they're the ones selling. A whole range of issues there. We recognise as well that there's a diversity of challenges for the poor who keep animals. Very much our targets there. Sometimes they'll be involved in raising animals, sometimes they'll perhaps be involved in growing something for animals to eat, sometimes they're trading animals. A whole range of different opportunities that relate to the livestock system they're in, the livestock commodity that's being produced, and the economic situation in which they're operating. Human health and environmental issues are always raised when we talk about the livestock sector these days. And we recognise livestock production can have negative implications for human health and for the environment. But especially in developing countries, there are huge opportunities for transforming livestock systems in such a way that human health and environmental issues are 
addressed in a very positive way through changes in livestock systems. New science is undoubtedly going to be needed though. Even in developed countries, the productivity of agricultural systems is reaching its boundaries. So we need new science solutions. That is very much the case in developing countries as well. And we want to make sure that we bring new science to bear on these challenges of developing country livestock agriculture. We recognize in many countries of the world, developing countries in particular, livestock is about 40% of agricultural GDP. But if you look at the investment in the livestock sector, it's very small in comparison. So we recognize that as part of what we do, if we're to be successful, that needs to go up, that investment in the livestock sector. We need greater capacity, both in the Institute itself to broaden, as we said, the development challenges are huge. We're talking about food security, we're talking about poverty, and environmental and human health issues as well. We need to broaden our capacity, but also in those we work with and in those who make investment decisions about where their development resources go. And of course, we need to make sure that we're an institute as a whole fit for purpose, that every bit of the organization is lined up to deliver on our strategic objectives. So given that diagnosis, what's new in the new strategy? It's a long-term strategy. It sets out a mission, a why, as I said, for the future. Meaning that we're not talking about the specific research we will undertake here, that will be described later, but we're setting the longer term goal for 10 to 15 years time. We recognize that we need to think about outcomes and impact. No longer is it enough for us to just deliver a research publication, uh, whatever it may be. We need to think about how we get to outcomes, how we have impact and hold ourselves accountable for that and make sure that we attribute to the many, many partners that we need to work with the right credit for that to happen. We recognize a lot of diversity. There's not gonna be one solution. There's different trajectories, different ways that livestock systems are gonna change in the future and that influences our choices of research for development. Different species of animals demand different approaches. For chickens, for pigs, for goats, for cattle, there's a different set of challenges and opportunities. And our own institutional strengths are very diverse as well. We work at high-end bioscience solutions right through to in the field work with partners in livestock value chains. We need to bring that diversity together and we need to work a lot with a whole range of partners. We need to recognize that livestock can be good, they can also be bad. Bad for the environment, bad for human health, but there's huge opportunities to address the environmental and human health challenges as livestock systems change into the future. The role of women. It's well recognized that if you don't address the role of women in agricultural research for development, you're not going to get to addressing food security and poverty. And there's really good numbers that support that. And the clientele for ILRI in the past used to be very much focused on the livestock producers. They're still part of the equation, but we need a greater diversity of partners. We need to think about those who are processing and trading animal products. We need to think about those who are in governments or in big NGOs making decisions about where to invest their resources and how we can impact that for the benefit of the livestock sector. In many developing countries, the predominant crop livestock production system are mixed systems 
And those systems actually globally produce most of the meat, most of the milk, and importantly, most of the cereals that poor people depend on as well. And these are the systems where we see huge opportunities for transformation into the future. As those systems can access markets more, and there's opportunities for increased productivity to enable smallholders who raise animals to be part of addressing the food security problem. And to do that in such a way that is friendly for the environment, that is equitable, and that takes account of human health issues. But there are some livestock systems where circumstances mean that that's not so easy. They may be remote, they may be marginal, may be very susceptible to climate change, for example, and increasing production and engaging in markets is not going to be such an easy thing. In these areas, research needs to focus more on mitigating vulnerability, on looking at the resilience of those systems and of the environment, and how animal agriculture can actually contribute to making that a much more resilient type of system. And some livestock systems are already pretty intense. Think around some peri-urban areas, even some large-scale livestock production systems where environmental and human health issues really come to the fore. And those will be important to address in terms of the development challenges in such systems. So in order to do this, ILRI must act in three areas that reinforce each other. So that leads us to our three strategic objectives. One is to impact on improved practice. We need to make sure that people who are raising animals, trading animals, processing animal products have the right kind of technologies, but also the right institutional and market environments to help them deliver. Secondly, we need to provide compelling evidence in a way that persuades decision makers about the investments they make in the livestock sector. And those decision makers may be farmers who will be making a choice about how they're going to invest in their animal production. But they may also be people who are making investment decisions in parliaments about how they're going to invest their development resources in the livestock sector. A huge range of people we need to influence. Something we've done on a bit of an ad hoc basis in the past, but which we recognise needs to be intentional now. And thirdly, we need to increase capacity. If that increased investment in the livestock sector is to happen, if that's really to deliver at scale, and those two things very much go together, then we need increased capacity of our own institute, of the many people we work with, and of those who are making decisions about investments. Well, could you start with just vulnerability and, and look and then maybe define the countries you're looking at? Let me just say a couple of words about how this strategy intersects with the CGIR consortium of which we are a member. We recognize that there's a whole host of livestock issues, global livestock issues, and in a sense, our strategy helps us to bring those to bear on the agenda of the consortium. We need to use that to make sure, for example, that livestock science is appropriately represented and researched in the programs that the consortium undertakes. Equally, because those are global programs, they can also inform the priorities for the livestock research that we, as ILRI, undertake. Finally, to mention the critical success factors, five performance areas where we as an institute must deliver in order to achieve those three strategic objectives. To get the science right, to influence decision makers, to grow the capacity, to ensure we're an institute fit for purpose and to make sure that we and our partners are appropriately resourced in order to deliver 
on what is a very substantial agenda. Thank you very much.